The Dream Shaper, the key to creativity. Have you ever experienced a moment so creative that you felt capable of doing anything? A torrent of ideas and imagination that simply overwhelmed you. If so, you'll know that these bouts of inspirational energy are hard to replicate. And if you've never felt like this, wouldn't you love to experience it for yourself? Well, thanks to a group of scientists at MIT, this may be possible. Because they've figured out a way to manipulate your dreams and unlock the key to human creativity. Unleashing Creativity Creativity is a harsh mistress. Whether you're trying to write an erotic limerick about Nelson Mandela, invent a new kind of toast-based lubricant, or you're figuring out a way to start a script about creativity with three funny examples, attempts to kick off the creative process often include a lot of head-scratching and downtime as you wait for the juices to flow. It is incredibly hard to force oneself to be creative during any given moment. Just try it for yourself right now. Can you think of three interesting uses for Jell-O that are family-friendly? Not as easy as it sounds, is it? The reason creativity cannot be induced by conscious thought is that our brain becomes more disinhibited when we aren't paying full attention. Actively thinking about a subject limits the scope of your ideas by placing mental barriers and filters upon them. True creativity seems to come from a subconscious place when you are thinking about nothing or pondering a different topic entirely. You enter an almost dreamlike state where ideas float around like apples in your mind and you allow them to ferment into delicious cider rather than attempting to squish them into some sort of horrible non-alcoholic concoction. I don't even know what you call such filth. Uh, juiced apples? No thank you. Humans have been trying to manipulate their own creativity for centuries in an effort to provoke those daydream moments and inspire them to even greater heights of inventiveness. In recent years, these efforts have become focused thanks to our progress in neuroscience and psychology. An experiment by psychologist Professor Art Markman found that mindfulness and meditation techniques are inhibitors of creativity, since they invoke a state of mind opposite to the busy thought mindset required for original thinking. Another study performed at the Weizmann Institute of Science in Israel found that people can be tricked into creative thought by using the placebo effect, meaning that simply believing yourself to be in a creative mood can be enough to trigger periods of inspiration. Does that sound like too much hard work? Don't worry, you lazy creative swines, we've got your back. Because according to various studies, including the experiments by MIT professors we mentioned at the top of this video, the key to creativity lies within the simple act of sleep. Hypnagogia Health experts and medical jerks advise that human beings should take around 8 hours of sleep per night, unless you want to wake up dead. Pretty sure that's verbatim. But did you know that sleeping all eight hours in one big chunk is a relatively recent phenomenon? Throughout history, there have been many examples of societies who slept in two four-hour periods separated by a one to two-hour break, with famous creatives like Charles Dickens known to have practiced this method of rest. People would use the early morning window to do all manner of fun, creative things such as making love, creating artworks, or writing letters and books and the decline of this practice has been linked to a concurrent rise in cases of insomnia. I can identify with this because I sleep like a damn baby after a wild night of hot, passionate correspondence with a pen pal, especially if it's someone I've boned. The reason this fractured sleep pattern is thought to inspire creativity is that when we wake up we experience hypnagogia, which is a transitional period between wakefulness and sleep. This is slightly different to a lucid dream where you're able to influence your activities and surroundings. It's more of a semi-lucid state. Cambridge University researcher Valdis Noreka calls it the natural fragmentation of consciousness. And it is said that during hypnagogia, humans experience a partial or total loss of their sense of time, space, and self, as well as a flurry of fluid disinhibited ideas. This is why you might wake up in the middle of the night with a eureka moment regarding an essay or a book you're writing. The moments after hypnagogia are when your brain is most free. And as inconvenient as it may seem, whatever project you're working on would be well served by you getting out of bed and letting the ideas flow. Unless you're in prison, and you wouldn't want to wake Pringles can Steve in the next bunk over. 
Different people experience hypnagogia in different ways. Some have reported hearing hallucinatory noises as if their ears are taking a trip, whereas others are able to maintain regular conversations. The hypnagogic period is an opportunity for humans to experience a state which is neither conscious nor unconscious, a moment of pure, elastic thought where insights and inspiration are abundant. And by using an incredible new machine called Dormio, one group of scientists from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology believe they've figured out how to not only inspire this state of mind, but control it, too. Dormio The Dormio technology consists of a monitoring system worn by participants over their hands, which can track changes in heart rate, skin conductance, and muscle tone to identify when a person has entered Sleepy Town. They could have also just used a big net to catch all the letter Z's floating out of their heads, but this was deemed both unscientific and silly by a man I just made up. When the system detects that the subject is asleep, audio is used to slap them back into semi-wakefulness, with the content of the audio consisting of spoken words such as fork, rabbit, or you've wet the bed. Okay, the last one's a lie, but they totally should have done that. After the patient has arrived at a point of semi-wakefulness, they are greeted by a social robot called Jibo, who not only engages them in conversation, but also records everything they've said. And this is where things get interesting. When you or I are woken up and forced to have a conversation, we'll often utter nonsensical ramblings about some dream where our ex-girlfriend dressed up like a salmon and forced a bear to play Twister with Tommy Wiseau for your birthday. However, when the MIT team listened back to the recordings made by Jibo, they discovered that the words played to their patients during their hypnagogic state had penetrated and influenced their dreams. The experiment was repeated over and over again, with a constant stream of micro-dreams intercepted, influenced, and extracted using this method. We have reached a stage where we can decide what human beings dream about. Great, I give it five years before pop-up sleep advertisements are a thing. Thankfully, the Dormio team don't have such evil intentions. They believe that their technique could be used to focus creativity towards certain topics, while also offering potential applications in memory augmentation and rapid learning. But as well as these practical uses, Dormio also offers us a chance to get to know our unknowable, unconscious selves. It is rare that science and technology come together to provide answers to philosophical questions, but in this instance they have with Dormio providing a potential access point to the thoughts and feelings we all have when we're devoid of mental barriers. I imagine it would be equal parts fascinating and harrowing to find out what your brain likes to ponder when it thinks nobody is listening. What do you think about? What do you imagine yourself doing? Where do you visit and how do you act? Am I super hot and cool in my dreams just like real life? Hopefully, the Dormio team will one day be able to help answer those questions as they plan to make and sell this technology to the public if and when it becomes viable to do so. In the meantime, you can make your own version of the device by downloading the tracking software from GitHub and following the build process outlined in this step-by-step -step article. Fortunately, we don't need to do this because we've already thought of three uses for Jello without it. Number 1. Slimer Halloween Costume Number 2. Throw it in the eyes of a panther that's charging towards you. And number 3. Create an ocean for drowning gummy bears. But if you are struggling for creativity and you can't build your own Dormio kit, you may want to watch our bonus video, The Secrets of Creativity, where we're going to explore some do-it-yourself creativity boosting techniques which you can try right now. This video can be accessed for just $2 via our Patreon page at patreon.com slash strangemysteries, along with 120-plus other bonus videos for just $2 a month. But if you've spent your last $2 on Jell-O because you're presently surrounded by angry panthers, then that's bullshit. We know you wanted more. Strange mysteries on YouTube and our Patreon bonus videos weren't enough to quench your search for truth, to give you that sense of awe and wonder again, to go past what you thought was the end, to give you the answers you seek, but which only lead to more questions. That's why we just up the stakes. Chemicals of reality. Reality, consciousness, brains. What else is there? Ask yourself that question. Perhaps that's all there really is, but perhaps everything else is found within a place where these ideas, these things, overlap. Some thing, some place that is undefinable. 
to many people, altering certain chemicals in their brains produces what they would simply call hallucinations. In fact, what we're going to discuss specifically used to be called the businessman's trip, as one could enjoy it. Come down and put your pants back on in the time it takes to eat lunch. It wasn't taken seriously. Well, unless, of course, you started digging. And some people, including us, did. Already, though, to many people, this chemical is special amongst others. Very special. To them, it represents something more meaningful and incredible, as if it's the gateway to the next level of consciousness. The ticket to a higher reality barely explored by most humans. It is the entry point to a new reality, visited by only a select few whose minds have become enlightened through the use of this exotic substance. For this reason, it's commonly referred to as the spirit molecule. But is its reputation as a mystical mind opener deserved? Or is it and everything it represents just a load of bullshit? We look at, investigate, and dive deeply into nearly all available research regarding this question from nearly every angle feasible. And in the course of doing so, stumble upon unexplainable patterns, correlations, and neurological evidence for a reality existing beyond this one. Watch this hour-long Strange Mysteries premium video, Chemicals of Reality, as well as many more to come by becoming an elite premium member of our Patreon at patreon.com slash strange mysteries.